Some rivals hate each other, others use their rivalry as fuel to reach greater heights, and in this case, it was scoring more goals. Thierry Henry and Ruben Nistelrooy, two icons who competed across England, Spain, and on the world stage. But there's a key difference between these two players that made Henri come out on top. Before we witness their epic battle, let's rewind to the beginnings of their remarkable careers. After soaring through the ranks at Clairefontaine Academy, Thierry Henry joined Arsene Wenger's AS Monaco, and within two years, he became a regular starter in the first team. He was a lightning-fast winger with mesmerizing skill on the dribble, but he was still far from the finished article. The Frenchman lacked a killer instinct in front of goal, only managing 28 goals in his 141 appearances for the Red and Whites. He did, however, win the league with Monaco in 1997 and, in the following year, lifted the 1998 FIFA World Cup at just 21 years old. And as his time in France drew to a close, Henri readied himself for a major change. In 1996, Arsene Wenger left Monaco for Arsenal and two summers later attempted to bring Henri with him, a perfect combination since Arsenal was Henri's dream club. Unfortunately, talks with the Gunners broke down after Monaco doubled their asking price, and in the middle of the 98-99 season, Henri transferred to Juventus. While at Monaco, Henri was given the freedom to wreak havoc down the wings and trouble the opposition defense, at Juventus, he was tasked with a more defensive role. In a 3-5-2 formation, Henri operated on the left side of a five-man midfield, which nullified his goal-scoring capabilities. Ultimately, his time in Turin was short-lived, and in 20 appearances, the winger contributed three goals and two assists, an unimpressive return that actually opened the door for Arsenal. And on August 3, 1999, Henri's dream came true with an 11 million euro transfer to the Emirates. This was the move that would define the Frenchman's career. Despite lacking goal-scoring instincts, Wenger envisioned Henri as a striker, and the two collaborated to improve his playing style. The results weren't immediate, as his first league goal came eight games into the season. But by the end, Henri amassed an impressive 26 goals and 9 assists, with 17 goals and 8 assists in the league alone. The 22-year-old was finally bringing his potential to life. That summer, he represented France at the Euros and returned as a champion. He was also named France Footballer of the Year. Henri continued to shine during the 2001 season, registering 22 goals and 11 assists in 53 appearances. And among his performances was a remarkable display against Leicester, where he scored three goals and provided two assists. It's a deep corner by Alpires, and that is a marvelous goal by Thierry Henry. In the five seasons prior to joining Arsenal, Henri had scored just 34 goals, and in the two seasons after, he'd scored 55. This marked Henri's transition from a winger struggling in front of goal to a prolific goal-scoring striker. But there's a problem. Any great rivalry requires an equally matched foe. And at the time, many of the league's highest scorers were approaching their 30s. But all of that was set to change with the arrival of Ruben Nistelrooy. If you're enjoying this video, remember to like and subscribe. Van Nistelrooy began his career at FC Den Bosch, where he displayed a natural goal-scoring ability. In the following season, he joined SC Heerenveen in the Eredivisie, scoring 13 goals and providing 6 assists in 31 games. He hadn't set the world on fire, but at 21 years old, Van Nistelrooy was recognized as a promising talent. PSV Eindhoven, one of the Netherlands' biggest clubs, saw him as a worthwhile investment, and in 1998, acquired his services for a fee of 6.8 million pounds. The investment paid off immediately, as the Dutchman scored 42 goals and provided 10 assists in 46 matches. His impressive performances earned him a call-up to the Netherlands national team, where he joined the likes of Van der Sar, Burkamp, Patrick Luivert, and Overmars. At just 22 years old, Van Nistelrooy achieved remarkable feats, including a hat-trick in the Champions League, finishing second in the European Golden Boot race, and winning the Eredivisie Golden Boot, claiming the Dutch Super Cup, and being named Dutch Footballer of the Year. But despite all the attention surrounding him, Van Nistelrooy couldn't leave PSV without winning the league. That following season, he continued his extraordinary goal-to-game ratio, scoring 32 goals and providing 8 assists in 32 games. He again received the Dutch Footballer of the Year award, claimed the Eredivisie Golden Boot, and secured his first league title. At last, Van Nistelrooy's talent caught Ferguson's attention, but not the one you might think. After witnessing his skill firsthand, Darren Ferguson urged his father, Sir Alex Ferguson, to sign him immediately. Manchester United sent scouts to observe Van Nistelrooy, and soon after, PSV received an offer of £19 million for the young gold machine. Like Henri, it was finally time to step onto the biggest stage. Or so he thought. Not long after the offer was sent was the transfer cancelled due to Van Nistelrooy failing his medical. United was concerned about his knee's sustainability, 
and during the very next training session, Van Nistelrooy suffered a cruciate ligament injury, sidelining him for a year. In the subsequent season, he made only 14 appearances, scoring 4 goals and providing 2 assists. Despite the setback, United still saw the talent within him and decided to give him a second chance. And on April 21, 2001, Van Nistelrooy's dream move to Old Trafford became a reality. Arsenal and Manchester United were two of the best teams in England, so it was no surprise that a rivalry bred between their star strikers. But in truth, this rivalry was pretty one-sided. While having a Golden Boot challenger motivated the two, it meant far more to Van Nistelrooy than Thierry Henry. Still, there were genuine debates over who was the superior striker. Van Nistelrooy immediately hit the ground running, scoring 23 goals in the league, a tally that would have made him the top scorer had Henri not scored 24. Van Nistelrooy did, however, come out on top in the Champions League, winning the Golden Boot with 10 goals while Henri finished third with 7. But Henri's primary focus wasn't winning the Golden Boot. He was far more concerned with his team winning the league. In the 2002-03 season, Van Nistelrooy outperformed Henri in both the league and the Champions League, scoring 25 and 12 goals respectively. His contributions even propelled Man United to win the league ahead of Arsenal. However, this wasn't enough to prevent Henri from being voted EPL Player of the Season for the second consecutive year. Henri had broken the 20 goal and 20 assist barrier in the league alone, scoring 24 goals and providing 20 assists is a record no one else has claimed in the EPL. Whenever he did or didn't score, the first thing he would do when we got on the team bus after the game was see if Thierry Henry had scored. If Henri had scored, he wouldn't talk to anybody for the full trip home because he was so engrossed in being the leading goal scorer. Not just at United, but in the league, in the world, everywhere. Henri finished that season with 32 goals and 23 assists, compared to Van Nistelrooy's 42 goals and 7 assists. Even though he'd scored more goals and won more trophies that season, he could hardly rest easy knowing what Henri was capable of. And the victory wasn't helped by Henri actively giving away goals. To me, the most beautiful thing is making the pass when you are in a position to score yourself. You know you have the quality to score, but you give the ball away. You share. The joy, you see it in the eyes of the guy. You know, he knows, everyone knows. It's this kind of selfless play that underlined Henri and the Premier League's greatest individual season. The intense rivalry between Arsenal and United added to the competition between these two strikers. In 2004, the Arsenal Invincibles cemented their place in history, going the entire league campaign without losing. And at the front of this historic side was Thierry Henry, who scored 30 goals and provided 6 assists, his highest goal tally in the Premier League. This meant Van Nistelrooy's achievements, including the Community Shield and FA Cup, were overshadowed by his arch nemesis. And it didn't help that his own partner regarded Henry so highly. During the January transfer window, United signed Luis Saha who came alongside Van Nistelrooy as a striker. I want to do at United what Thierry Henry has done at Arsenal. He is the most complete striker in the world right now and has all the qualities a striker needs to be the best. With both men in striking positions, they didn't have much interaction on the pitch, but they were still at the heart of several incidents, including a meeting in 2004. In an attempt to win the ball back, Van Nistelrooy came down on Ashley Cole's knee with a high boot but the center ref didn't see it and no red card was issued during the match. It wasn't until several days later that the FA issued a three-game ban for the Dutchman. By then, the damage was done. Arsenal's 49-game unbeaten run came to an abrupt end, leaving many feeling hard done by. But Van Nistelrooy wasn't the only one looked at. After the player ban was issued, Man United sought revenge through Henri, who they thought deserved the strongest possible disciplinary action for a foul on Gabriel Hines a complaint that would ultimately fall on deaf ears. Thierry Henry was in the clear. Even after serving his suspension, injuries soon plagued Man United striker, limiting him to 16 goals and 6 assists that season. Henry, on the other hand, excelled with 30 goals and 15 assists. The gulf between the rivals was ever increasing, and the question over who was the better striker had died out completely. 2006 was a similar story, as Henry again outscored Van Nistelrooy 33-24. He also provided 10 assists to Van Nistelrooy's 4. The rivalry had reached its boiling point in England, and Van Nistelrooy's move to Los Blancos looked to have spelled the end. But as fate would have it, the two strikers crossed paths once again, this time in the sun-soaked stadiums of Spain. Thierry Henry took his talents to Barcelona, and for the second time, the marquee strikers played for fierce rivals. Henry's combination of speed and technical wizardry made him a perfect fit for Barcelona's style of play and he contributed 49 goals and 27 assists during his three seasons in Spain. Despite various injuries during his stay in Madrid, Van Nistelrooy recorded 64 goals and 16 assists. Then came 2010. It was finally time for the strikers to part ways, and this time for good. 
In 376 appearances for Arsenal, Henri managed 228 goals and provided 103 assists. Still, Van Nistelrooy had something Henri didn't. I think even Henri would admit Van Nistelrooy was the more natural goal scorer. He was a classic poacher known for his predatory instincts inside the penalty box. He possessed exceptional positioning and was a true master of finishing. In 219 appearances for Manchester United, Van Nistelrooy scored 150 goals and provided 25 assists, which if you do the math was a world class return for a player dealing with injuries. He actually had a better goal to game ratio than Henri. But in the end, Henri's team first mindset took him further than his rival ever could have dreamed of.